Can you describe what it was like going in, in entering in into high school that first day? I just was going to meet everybody in the whole school, but I never saw so many students all in one place. Now, just the eighth graders came from six different schools. Uh, Lois Euler was a 10th grader, and she's the one that wrote the fight song. Mr. Fred Weigel, who was our choir director, he wrote the alma mater. Mr. Osid Chuck, who was our band director, wrote the music to both. We also had a prayer before every meal. Our Heavenly Father up above, look down upon our school with love. Bless every pathway we may trod, accept our thanks, O God, and we said that before every lunch period. No, as a matter of fact, the auditorium was not complete. The um, cafeteria was basically finished enough that we ate our lunches in there, but uh, they didn't open the cafeteria part for serving until December 1st of 1954. A Blast didn't come out until March of 1955. A lot of people lived in Arlington. Because it's only Pentagon. 10 miles from here. 10 miles. Uh, no. I mean, that seemed like a lot back then. Uh -huh. It did to me when we were moving out here. I <laughs> thought we'd never get here. <laughs> and then we moved to Arlington when I was two, and then out here when I was six. And I just loved it. Um, my older sister had lots of her friends, so she didn't want to leave there. Uh -huh. And my brother took violin lessons. He was 10. And... He just, that all he said was, how am I going to get to my violin lessons? Uh -huh. They said, well, what did, what did, what, how did you feel about moving out here? I said, there were trees to climb. There were creeks to play in. <laughs> there were crayfish to catch. Uh -huh. you know? and, and that was, it was exciting to me. That was really exciting to me. But I mean, for businesses and stuff that come out here. Well, it, why, why we, we had the Annandale Grill, we had Roadside Market, we didn't even have a Safeway, a giant food, nothing, you know. But anyway, and I was in the girls' chorus, and I love Mr. Fred Weigel. He was, if I thought I ever knew anything about music before, I knew nothing. Till Mr. Fred Weigel taught us. Huh. So. Mr. Buckley was a warm, loving person. He, uh, he was very strict. He was very strict. Uh, but he would give students the benefit of the doubt when, when he'd find they had some kind of trouble. He would sit and talk with them and he would resolve things. He was, he was like a father to all of us. Hmm. He really was. He was a wonderful man. Hmm. I spoke at his memorial service and, uh, wow, I felt very honored. 59. <laughs> and it is now called the Ralph Edward Buckley Grand Entrance. And there is a, a thing there somewhere. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure where it is. Oh, let's see, that says the climbing, climbing 50s folks uh -huh. wrote things, and one guy wrote that. <laughs> wow. But, I mean, it, it, there were just sweet, sweet things that people said, and everybody, that's all they had to say was, Mr. Buckley was wonderful. And I said, you don't have to tell me that. I said, I'm the last one you have to tell that to. But... My daughter did, uh, she picked the 50s as a decade to do when she was a junior in high school. And then she says, Mother, was there anything that frightened you? The Doomsday Machine. He's duck and cover. Practicing to duck and cover, just as you do in your school. Annandale's nickname, the Adams, harkens back to the nuclear age of the 1950s. 
Another reminder from that era is a bomb shelter located on the school grounds. We had to put black curtains over the windows because the war was, it was just ending, you know, and they were worried about air raids and stuff like that. We had the air raid siren between the Annandale Elementary and the firehouse. And my sixth grade class was right next to the firehouse. <laughs> when that thing went off, it was just like, I mean, it terrified me because I didn't know if it was real, you know, if something was really mm -hmm. happening or what. And I said, yes, as a matter of fact. So I was telling her about that siren. And then I said, and there was one other thing. That was Russia. There was a whole lot. There, it was bad news back then, and I, did, I was afraid they were going to come over here. Right. So that was kind of freaky. Well, boys, I reckon this is it. Nuclear combat toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Ruskies. You, uh, your, your incredible story about how you came back, you, you came back and got your GED 50 years later. Somebody said, why did you take so long? Why did you wait until this long? I said, because I was raising children by myself. You know, mm -hmm. I was working two and three jobs. I couldn't very well go for classes. I dropped out of school my 11th year. I had just turned 16 in October. I got married the next month in November. I had my son the following November. And then one just before, I was 17, and just before I was 19, I had Dennis. And, and then four years later, and then five years later. <laughs> <laughs> but um, that's why I decided I've got to go back and get my GED. And the wonderful thing about it was that Mr. Buckley handed me my certificate of graduation. And I had gone to these classes, I only went three, three nights, I think, and Kathy, the instructor, said, I want you to go take the test. And I said, Kathy, I am not, <laughs> I've been out of school for 50 years, you know. She says, oh, you're more ready than you think. So I went ahead, I took the test. There were 18 people, I was the only one that passed. And my grades of four classes, I was 98 percentile, 89 percentile, 79 percentile, and I have no clue what I did in math because I didn't care. <laughs> I passed. <laughs> and so Mr. Buckley's son arranged for us to have the um, Clausen Hall over there. Mm -hmm. And they played Pomp and Circumstance. And I wore a cap and gown and several people were there. And when I walked up to the front, Mr. Buckley looked and he says, Good morning, folks. We are here to celebrate Nikki and to honor her when in fact it is she who honors us. <laughs> the man was, he just knew how to get me. <laughs> well, I didn't get it until 2009. Wow. 50 years and one day. Wow. After my class, and we came back here, and my daughter gave me a graduation party, <laughs> and I had 12 of my classmates uh -huh. to this graduation. Wow. And it was just, Wow. <laughs> it was so exciting. Wow. And my daughter said to me, she says, Mother, you know, I've seen you smile a lot, but I've never seen you smile from sun up to sun down. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, I can't help it. I said, I said, I think this is better than me having each one of my kids. <laughs> wow. Mom! <laughs> and I loved, I loved Annandale High School. I loved the school. When we walked through the doors, September 1st, 1954, Mr. Buckley was there to greet us, <laughs> and uh, we were eighth graders because there were no junior highs, <laughs> no junior high anywhere. So, um, Mr. Buckley decided that we were Buckley's babies, <laughs> and we're the only class that he ever called Buckley's babies. <laughs>